Good evening to all of our Alachua County public school parents. We are so excited about this opportunity that we have on this evening. Uh, I would like to first say that I am Dr. Antoinette Edwards. I am the Chief of Equity, Inclusion, and Community Engagement. And one of the things that we have done this year is moved our Parent Academy into the Equity Office. It was really important for us to ensure that we had opportunities for all parents to be able to hear information that can empower them in the process of helping to support students as they move through our educational system. So tonight is our kickoff and we're extremely excited about it um, because we have this chance to share with you all some very um, important details about Skyward Family Access. And we know that uh, the more information that you have about this family access program allows for you to dig deep into the grades for your students, have opportunities to be able to communicate with teachers, and really just be a part of this family that we have in Alachua County Public Schools, where we know that our students and our families and our educators all work together for the ultimate success of all kids. Um, as you can see on our screen today, that this is being hosted by Alachua County Public Schools, the Parent Academy, but also with Gainesville for All. We're very um, excited about the opportunity to work with Gainesville for All and have them share with families and encourage families to be a part of the virtual sessions that we will have. This will not be the one and only session. It is just the beginning. We have some other exciting sessions that will be coming up that we'll talk to you more about later. So we hope that um, you are um, appreciative of this opportunity because we're hoping that what you'll be able to say is that you gained so much from it that it was helpful for you and your family and helping your students and your children to succeed. Um, and then lastly, I want to say that um, in addition to Gainesville for All, I am very um, appreciative of the staff that are working with us on this night. They're uh, staying late to help out and to provide information for you. I know that uh, Ms. Kim Neal and her team are gonna be sharing some uh, insights with you today that are very valuable, but that we also will have a question and answer portion at the end, at the end of the discussion um, where those who may um, have questions in Spanish language and wanna ask those, there's gonna be some assistance with that. So we're very excited to be working together collaboratively. And so now I give it over to Kimberly Neal. Thank you so very much. We are excited about this opportunity to share Skyward Family Access with you. This um, presentation is being recorded and will be posted um, on both down the line, the Parent Academy website, as well as our Family Access website that I will share with you in a bit. Again, I want to echo the thanks to our team for being online. I have some of my staff and then also um, Camille Levitt on the line who are going to be doing some question and answer during the presentation. Feel free to go ahead and ask those questions as you have them during the webinar. So I have, again, my team members are responding to answers in the Q&A feature of the webinar. If you are live with us through this webinar in your Zoom screen at the bottom of the screen, there is a Q&A feature. You can type in a question. We will respond to that. My team will be answering those as we go. For parents that need an interpreter, we do have a Spanish language interpreter who can answer those questions in the Q&A section in Spanish. So we're excited for that opportunity as well. To be very honest with you, this is the first time we've done that. So I'm hoping that that is successful and helpful to anyone who is watching the webinar live tonight. Unfortunately, in the recorded version, the question and answers will not show if you are watching this recording. However, we are putting a frequently asked questions portion on our website for the Family Access website that I will show you in a bit. And any questions that we get tonight may be um, put in that section. So again, we do encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar, and we will be um, going through some of the main features in Family Access. We will probably not get to all of the features, but we do wanna show you some of the main features. So our agenda for the night is really going to be talking about how do you as family have access to Skyward Family Access? How do you get into that system? How do you get a username and a password for that? We're also going to spend some time in Family Access looking at how you can look at your child's overall grades, but then also how you can drill down into the assignment level and see missing assignments, what grade a child got on an assignment, and really dig into the assignments portion of your child's gradebook. 
you'll only see your child. I know there's some parents who are, are curious about that. If it, the, the whole teacher's grade book, when you're under your Skyward Family Access, you only can see your child or your children within that. So it is a very safe and secure method for you to do that and only see your child. We're also going to give you some ways that teachers are communicating with you via family access, but also how you can communicate with your teachers, how you get their information to be able to email them. And in some cases, even um, respond to them via family access. So that's, those are our three main areas we're going to look at tonight. We may down the line, follow up with some other presentations that dig into different areas of family access. Why use family access? There is so much information for you within Skyward's family access. The, again, the ones we're gonna look at tonight are current grades, assignments. I'm gonna show you how to access your child's progress reports and report cards within family access. But you can also look at discipline information. You can see your child's attendance. If you're curious, are they getting to class on time? Are they attending all the time? You can even see that. Test scores, once those are posted annually, those are available and they stay there. So you can look back at prior year's test scores. How you can update your own family phone numbers and email addresses without having to go to the school. So if you need that email address to change, you've gotten a new email or a new phone number and what we, are, we have in our system is old, you can log into Family Access and change that information yourself how you see teacher messages, how you can update how we as a district contact you is also a feature within Family Access. So those Skylert notifications, those district-wide notifications or school notifications, you can update that if you need to update the phone number or the email address that those notifications go to. That's just a small portion, again, of what Family Access can give you, but those are the main reasons we see families using Family Access. So hopefully after tonight, you will also take advantage of these features. Oops. If you do not have an account, you can get, get that account by either visiting your child's school and explaining to them, I need into family access. They will confirm your information and then they will send you a link where you can um, go in and set your account up. If you can't get to your child's school for whatever reason, we also have an email address for you. This comes to my team, those that are answering that Q&A this evening for us. And it's familyaccessrequest at gm.sbac.edu. That is monitored again by my team that does um, the Skyward Family Access. And we really run all of that student information system for Skyward. If you are doing that via email to my team, we will need the information that's showing on this screen, your full name, first and last name, your child's full name, your child's date of birth, your child's current grade level, what school they attend. And then for identification purposes, we need to be able to know that we are on the, with talking with the right parent to give that access. We also do request a picture of your um identification as the parent's identification, not of your child. We do get some very cute children's pictures in when we get these emails and we love seeing them, um, but we need it for identifying the parent and who we are giving that account to. So a picture of your ID. We do have a handout that will be on that website or is on the website that I will share with you shortly that then walks you through, oops, I went too far that then walks you through how to set up that account. So I know it's probably small on this screen. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger for you, but this is also on the website. So if you forget what you need to send us, it's on here. And this is about setting up your account and going on to and setting up that mobile app. You can set up that mobile application right on your cell phone. So you can look at grades right in the palm of your hand. It is simply that simple. You will have to download the mobile app from your phone um, or your, your phone's app store. Um, so you do need to go in and do that. You're just looking for Skyward mobile app. It would have this icon on that. And then you would follow the directions on this sheet um, so you would set up your passcode to log in. You will pick Alachua County School District. 
Um, this lists all of the various districts that have the mobile app. So you would need to make sure that you get to our school district. And then once your username and password is set up, you would use those credentials to log in on your phone. And then you would be able to log in either to the Family Access mobile app or the desktop app. And I'm going to talk about the differences in that a little bit later in our presentation. The mobile app is streamlined to meet the phone um, size, those sorts of things, but it is not as, a, as robust as the actual desktop version. So again, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through our evening. But this handout is available for you again on our website that I will share with you shortly. Once you have that all set up, you have your username and your password set up, then you can access that again via that mobile app, or you can also get to that from the school board's website. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that path and that way to get there. So if I'm going to just open my regular browser and I'm going to go to the school board website, which is www.sbac.edu. And when I get there, it takes me to our district's homepage. Lots of things are on this homepage. There's a lot of important information. If you have not looked at this um, webpage or not something that you are familiar with using a lot, I encourage you to log in and look around. There are areas just for families. If you look down here, areas for families, areas for students. So look at that, I do encourage that. But you should see on your homepage a Skyward logo. And if you click on this Skyward logo, it will take you to a very specific page to Skyward. When you get here, the ERP system is an employee side of Skyward. That's not the side you're going to look at. You are going to want Skyward SIS, which stands for Student Information System. So the Skyward Student Information System is what we're looking at tonight. And then right underneath there will take you to our Skyward Family Access page. And this again is information for families. It's what you will have tonight. All of our help documents will be on this website. So I'm going to go ahead and click to that website so you can see that. When you get to this, again, we do have our documents. This will continue to grow as we build more and more documents for you. All of the things I'm going to talk about tonight are addressed throughout these helpful documents. So I encourage you to come to this and go through that. At the moment, we do not have all of these documents in Spanish. We are working on the translation for that. Um, so coming soon in Spanish um, will be these handouts as well. We do have a few of the ones at the bottom here um, already translated for you. To log into Skyward, we would click right here on this link. This is going to take us into that. Um, if you need the account, we, this takes you to that um, sheet I was showing you a few moments ago with the directions for that. And this is where we will be building that frequently asked question using your questions from tonight and any other questions that we receive. I want you to um, also know that family access request email, you can send questions directly as well through that email. So this is that website. It will continue to grow and build. We are working on that um, as, as always, we're gonna continue to add to that. So looking through that again, I just wanna make sure you know how to get to that. This again, presentation will be posted for you. So if you forget, it's just on our school board website and then you'll see the student information system area. This is what I just walked you through. Um, so we've already gone to that. There's the picture of our website. As a reminder, if you're reviewing this after tonight, you do have that as part of this presentation that will be there for you as a reminder. We talked about I was how we, the mobile app differs from the desktop app or the desktop version. So what I've done or what my team has done, actually, I'm gonna, I can't take credit, my team gets the credit for this, is we've done, they have done a comparison for you of what you can do in the mobile version versus what you see in the desktop version. You can still access both versions on your phone. You just have to click which one of those options you're logging into at that time. So once you do those credentials, remember you have the options of family access app 
or family access desktop. If you are using the app, you can very easily see the attendance information for your child. It's in live time. So as the teachers take attendance, it's showing here. So if you're worried about, did my child get to school today? That kind of thing, you can look at it right there and see if they're marked as absent. It does have busing information. It has a district and school calendars on here. If the schools are using those, we're gonna be working with our schools to try to encourage more and more use of the calendar. You can look and see um, posted discipline events. You can look at the grade book, which we're gonna go into the message center. This is where you can access report cards and progress reports, your child's schedule, and then student information, which is basic information. On the desktop version, in addition to these fields, you will also be able to access new student online enrollment. If you have a child already in our district and you're looking to enroll another student, that is all done via this online enrollment portal. If you go through the online portal through your family access, it builds in all of your family information for you. You don't have to enter all of that or fill out multiple pages. It will bring it in from the existing family. And then you would just add the information about the new student. For those of you who are listening and have students who will be starting school next school year, this will open for next school year right around kindergarten roundup, which is scheduled for April 27th. So new student enrollment for next year will start on or around April 27th. In addition to new student online enrollment on the desktop version, you can also see your child's test scores. Those would be previous standardized assessments. So the FSA scores, the Algebra 1 assessment, biology assessments, any of those standardized assessments. This isn't just your classroom tests or your district quarterly assessments. The, these are your state assessments that are shown in the test score area. As soon as the state releases those test scores each summer, we are loading those in very quickly. So you may see them loaded in here, even sometimes right around the time we're doing that parent notification. We load them very, very fast. So once you get the notification that they are live this summer, you'll be able to get in there very quickly and see those test scores and know how your child did. Graduation requirements for our students who are in high school, you can see where your child stands in those graduation requirements. How many English credits do we have? How many math credits? What's left? Those are all within that desktop version as well. So you can see then and follow those graduation requirements. You can also see an academic history. You can see grades from prior years through that academic history um, area. You can update your Skylert. That's how the district contacts you. So when those phone homes go out or those district-wide emails, this is where you can make those updates and you can see health information. So these are the differences between the mobile version or the mobile app and the desktop version. Again, both are accessible on your phone. So you can have them in the palm of your hand. The desktop version just might be a little small on that phone or on an iPad. You can do them there as well. So if you don't have access to a desktop all of the time, but you want the information that's in the desktop version, you can still access that. I'm gonna take you on a tour. So let's go through what this looks like for you. And we're gonna go into the grade book. We're gonna go into various features. So I am going to pull over a login screen. So give me just a moment. And I'm going into what we call our training site, or it's a, it's a test site that we use. So we've gone in and scrambled data. So we're not going to be looking at a live student tonight. We're looking at scrambled data, change data. So it is not somebody's, um, all of their information, just so you're aware of that as I'm going in. So I'm going to log in. This one, I'm going in as a mom. It's my, my username is even mom last. So know that we've scrambled everything. And I'm going to log in to Skyward. When you go in on that page I showed you and you click that, yours will not say training site. It'll be our true live production site. So I'm gonna sign in. And this is what the um, desktop app will look like for you. So the mobile app again will look a little bit different. So keep that in mind as you go. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through the desktop version of this. There is on the mobile app, a small tour you can take when you download that app. 
So if you have questions on that, you can reach out to my team. We will work with you on that, but you can also do the tour on the actual app itself. So let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. The first thing, if you have multiple students, know that it will show all students with a drop down arrow in this top area. So right now I'm seeing in my upcoming events calendars for multiple schools because there are children in multiple schools. I am seeing different, potentially different wall messages is what these in the middle are called. I'm seeing wall messages that could potentially be from different schools because I'm seeing all students right now. If I want to look at one student, I want to go into a grade book, I would have to select one student. So when I go in as one student, I'm gonna pick, I've got a son and a daughter in this family. I'm gonna to go to the son first. So if I go there, it's going to give me that his information. And when I come into this, I'm gonna come through this side over here and let me start with our student information screen. I'll just start there for right now. The student information screen gives you just very basic general information about your child. It also shows your family information, what numbers we have on file, what email we have on file, and you can edit this information right from this screen. So at the top where you see request changes for boy, maybe his name is James, whatever it would be, we would request changes and I'm going to request changes maybe to my family information. And this is where I could put in a new phone number. That's going to change my contact number at the school for this for my entire family because I did the primary number. If I want to change the cell number that's attached, and again, we've done jarbled phone numbers here. If I wanted to change that number, I could do that just by typing that in and then I would click save. I could also change my email. Maybe it should have had a period like my login, should be mom.last. I can update that, make sure that is accurate and correct. Or I could make a whole new one if I need to do that. So I could change that at any point. And then I would click on save and that information is saved. And if you'll notice, my primary phone number is now changed. My mom's cell number is now changed and my mom email is now changed. So that automatically updates for the school and for our contact information. You cannot change your family address in this. You do have to take proofs of residency to the school, but if you want to see the address that is on file, you can see that under family address. Another area that you can view within all of um, our desktop version is the calendar. Right now, we're still on the sun of this family. So I'm only going to see the calendar for the sun. If I were to go back to show all students, I see more information now and it's showing me information for both students. Let's see, you can also, I do wanna show you on your calendar display, you can show things in different colors. So all of this is blue for both children. That's gonna confuse me as a parent, I think. I would be very confused by that. So what I can do is I can come in here and change the colors to other colors that I would like to use. So maybe I would like green, to show for all of my daughter's events. So I can come and set that um, throughout and change those colors. And then when I save that, probably I don't have anything on this calendar that's one of those things, I'm so sorry. Um, let's see if I can find one that is that. Let's just go to calendar events maybe. There we go. It did not change. So I'm picking the wrong options. I'm so sorry. It does change, I promise you, so that it does come into that. So it will show you a different color um, as we go. You can also hide the Saturday, Sunday on the calendar if you only want to see your school days. So um, keep in mind, I am in that training site, so that may not be a full functionality, but we couldn't change a live child. So we changed it in our training site. So you do have that calendar option. 
The grade book is where I really want to spend some time with you tonight. Note that under grade book, it does say I need to select a student because his family has two children. So when I come in and I select a child, I'm going to um, go on to the son of this family. Then it will load that grade book for me. So what I'm seeing here are all of this son's classes and all of the grades up to this point. This is in live time. So as teachers enter grades, this is changing. So this can be changing at all times. Right now, this was late, last backed up in mid-February. So this is only gonna be active up to mid-February. Um, but in your site, it is live time. So if they're putting grades in tonight, the teachers are doing that, it would be changing on your page. So you can see all of the classes that your children are in. Um, you can also click on anything that is in blue. If it is in blue, it means there is data for you to see. What I want you to keep in mind is progress reports are P1, P2, those are progress reports for quarter one, progress reports for quarter two. Those are snapshots in time. So when they are the live snapshot, it would show you, but usually these are gonna show in black without data because all of the information within progress two is actually under quarter two because it's all within the quarter two window. So if I click on the quarter two window or the semester one, or the yellow is the term we're currently in. So right now we are in quarter three. If I click on any of those, and I'm gonna just go into this live quarter for you. If I click on that quarter, it takes me for that class to the information regarding my child and their assignments. This is where I can see the assignments. I can see the grade that they received. I can see the score, how many points out of how many points available. So here I can see these two assignments have no grade and they have an asterisk, which tells me those are missing assignments. They're not graded yet, okay? If I come through, it's broken down by how the teacher's categories are within their grade book. So I can see homework. These are all homework assignments. I can see mini assessments or quizzes. These are all mini assessments or quizzes. If I hover over the title of that category, it will give me information about that. So for this teacher, mini assessments or quizzes are 20%, oh, I unhovered, sorry, 20% of the grade for this, this class and it gives information about that. If I click on the assignment itself or the test itself, I'm not going to see the test, but I am going to see when it was assigned, when the teacher considered it due, how many points. It's gonna give me just a little bit more information. Doesn't give me a lot on, the, on all of this, but it does give me a little bit. You can also print, if you have questions, you're like, I need to talk to the teacher about that. Let me print this out so I can see this and I can refer to that when I'm doing that email. You can click this print icon and it will give you a printout of every assignment that is showing for that quarter. So this is a, a handy way to see that. This is one way to see those assessments is just by clicking on any of the blue links. Again, that was only showing me quarter three because that was the quarter that I selected. If I wanted to see all of the first semester, I could click on the semester one blue letter, the blue grade. If I click on that, it's gonna give me a lot longer history because this is giving me all of the quarter one information. So as I scroll down, it gives me all of that information for the entire semester. So if I wanted to, whether it was question the teacher, question my child, I kind of say, hey, what happened on this assignment? You have access to see that information. You don't see the assignment itself, but you see how many points it was worth, how many points your child earned, what that grade was. And then in each of these headings, like this one, assignments and tests, it gives you, if you're looking at it by semester, it gives it to you by quarter one, 
what the overall grade was, was a B at 85% in the points. Quarter two overall was also a B with 82.8 points in the assessments. And remember, if I look at this, it gives me the weighting. So this is 65% of my child's semester grade, these things combined together. Okay, so this gives you that view by assignment by assignment, test by test. You can look at all of that. You can also, I'm going to show you multiple ways that you can reach out to that teacher or get that email to reach out. If you're on this um, page, if you hover over the teacher, you'll note that it becomes a hyperlink when it, it's underlined. If you click there, it gives you the teacher's information and there is the email address. From this place, you can copy and paste it into your email client, your Google Mail, your Yahoo, your Hotmail, your Workmail, whatever it is that you're using, and be able to email the teacher directly. Um, and this is one place you can do that. Anywhere you see this teacher's name, you should be able to get there. You, As I said, anywhere you see that, you can also get there right from the schedule area. You click on that, copy paste this, and it will take you to where you can email. Oops, I think I clicked something. I don't want to go to my email, I'm so sorry. Let me go back to that page. Oh no, did it log me out? I knew this would happen, you guys. Okay, let's see, I'm going to log back in as my person, I'm so very sorry. I clicked the wrong button. If it happens to you, just log back in too. It'll all be good. So we were in our grade book, I'm gonna go back to my grade book. I'm going to go back to the sun. That's where we were. So again, those hyperlinks work for you there. If you click on the title of the class, it's just going to give you general information. What is the course? What is the section they're in? Most of the time, this is not information that might apply. Sometimes it might. Um, for middle and high schools, it will tell you the correct time of the class. For elementary, I will be very honest, these times don't align to the real time in the schools. But in middle and high, they typically do align to our real bell schedule. So if you need to know what time does my kid have algebra, you can see it right there. Again, where the name is, you click on it, you can get to that email address again. You do have a lot of display options within the grade book. Those are just some of the features um, showing you here. If you click on display options, this will give you some of the ways that you can make some decisions. You may want to not only see the schedule, but you may want it to show you assignments, the latest assignments right underneath there. If I click on show assignments, note now I can see a few assignments for each class. These are the last ones that were done. So it is going to show me those. It will show me the score um, for each of those assignments. It does keep the current one in yellow, the current, um, nine weeks in yellow. And I can, maybe I want to this time look at my biology scores and I can just say, show me the next 10 as well. And so it's actually gonna show me more assignments as I go down. So this is another way you can see assignments without clicking on each course. This one, you could just see the latest assignments each time. Again, that's under your display options. I'm gonna unclick that, take it back to that regular view. I can also, um, right now it's set to view all grades. So it's giving me the full year on my screen. I could say show current grades only. If it does that, then I'm only seeing the current quarter. I can still access all of the other quarters by going in and changing that display option or clicking on that class to see all of that history. But if you're worried about this nine weeks and you don't want all of that history, you could do that and then show previous and current takes you back to that screen as it was, okay? And shows you current the previous and current, but does not show you the future. So if you notice when we had it showing the whole year, view all, it did take us on into quarter four under progress four. So it's, it, that's really a matter of personal preference, which way you want to see that grade book. The other thing that you can see here for middle and high schools is a student GPA. Their grade point average is displayed here. 
You can see it for prior years as well. So it's going to give you a state GPA and a weighted GPA. Um, remember some of our courses, all of our courses for state GPA are on that 4.0 scale. Our honors classes, ACE classes, several, there's a lot of different reasons. A course may have a weighted GPA, but it will also give you that weighted GPA. I can then go in and view those details of GPA. It just really breaks it down into um, a little bit more. It doesn't give me much more in there. Okay, so but this gives you all of that information. This is your cumulative GPA. How many credits are going into that GPA? So it's your overall GPA with 10 earned credits. Um, and then if there are any failed credits, they would show. Again, the GPA is available for middle and high schools. We don't use that GPA in our elementary schools. Okay. Another feature here is that you can see this highlights missing assignments. So if you need to see just straight off the bat, right at the top of the grade book, what is marked as missing? Right now we can see that we have one missing assignment it's from way back in October, okay? So there might not be anything we can do about that missing assignment now because that grade book and that, that grading window that semester is over. But if it was a current one, we could be getting with our child about that, made, that missing assignment, see if there's anything we can do there. I'm going to switch over um, to the daughter in this family. Let's look at the grade book in a, as a different way. This is an elementary grade book. So it does look very different in that you have, there are many more courses. We're talking art, music, PE, all of those things come into play. And in some of these, there are either, um, like for here, we can see these are dropped classes. So these are classes that the child was in, and then there was a schedule change and that schedule dropped those classes, but it still shows you that, that course history or that grading history. So that's why this one looks so long is it does also show the dropped courses. And then the same with our elementary grade book. If you click on the assignment or the, the blue letters, it does take you into the grade book. You can see all of that. You can see the assignment category breakdown in a view here as well as a graph. If I click on any of these assignments, just like it did in the secondary grade book, it gave us that view. I click on the teacher name. Again, this one doesn't have an email entered. We're gonna have to look at that and make sure why that's not showing for you. Um, but it, it should show you the email there as well. Okay. So very similar to the middle and high school grade book, just looks a lot longer in that there are more courses and sections showing in the elementary grade book because of the way that their schedule works. And this particular student shows dropped classes as well. In your display options, if you do have a child who has dropped classes, you can hide those dropped classes to only see the classes that the child is currently enrolled. Okay, Same other options exist here for you at the elementary level. You can, again, anywhere you see this printer icon, you can print that screen and it will give you a printout of that. So this would be a generic, print out of just the grade screen without all of the details. Again, if I need to see any information, I click on that course and it will give me that. If I click on the actual blue letters, it takes me to the assignments and the grades, how they were entered. Okay. All right. So grade book and assignments. I think those are, um, is therefore you note this one does not have any missing assignments. So this, there are no missing assignments. It's what you're hoping to see when you log into your child's grade book, right? We do hope that that's what you see. If not, again, it does let you click from there to see those assignments. It shows them right underneath for you. All right, attendance. Did my child get to school? Were they there? This is going to show you any days that the, the child is was out. And for today's attendance, it's gonna be right at the top, no absences or tardies were recorded. This would not say girl, it would say the child's name. Okay, so nothing was recorded here, but it does give you a breakdown of your excuse absences, other absences. You can see the year to date, you can see it by term. For our secondary, I'm gonna switch back over to the son in this family. 
This does give you an elementary attendance is really taking that once a day in your attendance course in, at the beginning of the school day. And the secondary schools, they are taken period by period attendance. So this gives you every period by period for that date. This is going to show me by day. If I wanna see my chart by period, I could also change that. And it would show me um, by class period. Again, for today, no absences or tardies were recorded. This is where you could follow day by day on that day that you wanna look. You could see it right there. It will show you a checkout. If it was excused or unexcused by doctor's note, was marked absent by teacher. You, you can see all of those details of your absences or your children's absences right on this attendance screen. If you have questions about that attendance, contact your school's attendance clerk. Um, if you see in there, I thought I sent a doctor's note, check the backpack, make sure it's not there. If you need to send in that note again, whatever you need to do there. So this is a great way to keep track of attendance, especially making sure that those events got excused if you had sent in those excuse notes. That's extremely important that the children are actually turning them in and getting those documented as well. School sponsored functions, they might have been an attesting day that day. They might have had a school field trip that day, something like that. So if it's a school event, they do go in under school sponsored function as excused absences. It doesn't really count as an absent because it's a school function. Okay. Um, same with um, during this school year and last school year as we've had quarantines. Quarantines may show here but they are not counted against a child in that attendance. So another thing to check for your child's attendance might be if they were out for a 10 day quarantine, did that get documented accurately on this attendance screen? You may wanna check on that if you did have that situation with your family. Um, so it might be something you wanna log in. Let's look back at that attendance history. And if it didn't get logged in, get with that school about what documentation they would need, okay? So we've gone through gradebook attendance. We've looked at the student information page already. Um, the busing information, this is very generic in that it really just gives you the bus number. There's not a lot of details here, um, but that does give you, and we will look at making that a little bit more robust. It won't tell you if they're late. That's what the notifications do for you, um, but we will look to see if there's more robust information to go there that might give you the stop location, that kind of information. Your child's schedule, you can see that through the grade book, right? We saw that already in the grade book. This just breaks it down a little bit more by semester or by quarter for you, I mean, sorry, by quarter. Again, our current quarter is going to be highlighted in yellow, um, but it, this does give you more of the period times that your child is actually in that class. Again, for secondary schools, middle and high schools, this is fairly accurate with those times in elementary school, these times do not align. So keep that in mind again. Here's another place where I should be able to get to that teacher email right there on the student's schedule. I can also change this view. I can say I wanna see it weekday by term. It's a little busy and most of our schools it's not different by weekday, but for some it may. So you can see a matrix view, which is just a chart view, um, or you can see the weekday by term. If you are looking at this during the school day, it will show you where which class your child is in at that time. So right now it's saying that this, this son is already done with his classes for the day because we are at 644 at night. So he's not in class right now. But if he were in class, it would show you that as well where, he, where they are, okay? Another um, place on this screen, you can see discipline. If there is a discipline offense, it would show here. Um, you could see that information. Test scores, I told you we wanted to make sure that you could see these. This is um, not always the most friendly of views because you've got to know what test you're looking for. And it's done by test name. You can look at the year. So remember I said it would give you a history of your test scores. So this gives history for this student all the way back to 2015 and forward. Keep in mind, there were no test scores in 2020. So there are none to show. So if you're seeing that gap in year, it's because we did not have those tests. But to see the test scores, you would click on show scores and it will show you that information. 
So if you have questions about specific test scores, I'm gonna refer you back to your child's school. But the basic breakdown of this is the District 01, they took it here in Alachua County, the school number, this I know is Buholtz because 0431 is Buholtz, um, and it breaks it down. But then the biggest pieces you're going to want here are the um, scale scores and the achievement level. The achievement level is what most of you are most familiar with, and that's that one through five scale for the most part, with three being that proficient passing score, four and five being above, two and one being below that proficient score. So you can see any of those prior year test scores. You wanna track your child's history in math or in ELA, you can look at each year and see if they're going up or down, trending up and down by that achievement level. Lots of different ways you can use this. Just real briefly, because um, I know these some of these are not on our main focus of the evening, but I want you to know what you're looking at when you're in here. The graduation requirements screen, I told you we would, is available for you. I'll go into more details for this maybe another time, or you can always call your school counselor to walk through this with you. I encourage you, if you have questions on this, call your child school counselor and talk through this graduation screen with them if you have a child in high school. So it gives you the required credits for each of these areas, how many credits are complete, how many credits are in progress, how many are scheduled, what's remaining, gives you all of those details in just a friendly chart here. I can click here for, to tell, for it to tell me view all courses. What courses has my child taken that meets this English credit um, requirement? So I can see the, the, hit, the coursework here. We've already started planning for next year a little bit. Those are hidden right now. You don't have access to those. You will at one point in time. Um, we can see our math courses that have been taken. So this just guides us through what courses have been taken that meet these various requirements. Again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this tonight. I am going to encourage you, look at this, spend some time in this and contact your child's counselor. Get with that school if you have questions on this, if you wanna talk through this, if you wanna talk through their course options, whatever that is, please reach out to that counselor at the school. They would love to hear from you, I assure you. Academic history does take you into just historical grade information. So you can see all the way back. Um, prior to the 2017-18 school year, you will only see a final grade, how these are listed, because that was pre-Skyward. We were in a different student information system at that time. So that's why it looks different in 2016 to 2017. But with the 2017-18 school year, we were in Skyward. And so you can see that whole year's history within that. Keep in mind what is actually on a transcript or on a final grade um, sheet are the semester grades and those final grades. But this gives you that historical view. Report cards and attachments. This is where you can see every time progress reports and report cards are posted, they are loaded onto Family Access for you. At the end of each year, the only thing that will remain is the final report card for that school year. So we, in our test site, we only are showing very little here, but there are report cards in your site. If your child has been in our district, you will see prior year's report cards starting about two years ago. So moving forward from about two years ago forward, you will see the end of year report cards. And for this year, you will see at least the most current report card. So if I click on the report card on that blue hyperlink for the report card, it takes me to that, takes it a moment because it's pulling it up for you. And then you would click on where it says view report. On view report, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger for us so you can actually see it you will be able to see the child's full report card. This is a printable report card. So if you'll notice on my screen, I can just come to this print icon, print this out. I have this available to me at any time now, okay? If I lose this, if I didn't get, my child didn't bring home a paper copy, some schools have opted to go more digitally there. Um, I could, like I said, I can print it. I can always access that final report card, which would have the whole year history in family access, okay? So this is where you would have that information. 
Just as a point of reference, you can see the GPA on our secondary report cards. And starting with quarter three of this school year, so it's not on this one because we hadn't done quarter three at this time, we do have attendance added back onto our report cards. So you'll be able to see attendance there as well. Again, this is prior to that being added though. If I were going to, um, I wanna come back in, I wanna to go to the daughter of this family, let's look at an elementary school report card. Same thing, I'm under the daughter, I'm on the report cards and attachments tab. I click on the quarter two report card. It tells me it's being generated, it's pulling it up for you. When it is done, I can view report. And again, it will take me to that report card and I can see the quarter two grades here. Okay, so very similar idea. We do not use GPA again in the elementary school, so that's not on this, but starting with quarter three, right up underneath where it says the grading period is attendance again, that is back on there. So that is an elementary version of the report card. The teacher comments are displayed right underneath the course um, information if the teacher put comments in. Skylart information, this is where you can change how the district contacts you. You can come into this Skylart page and you can update what do you want to get? Do you want to get school hours during uh, emergency information during school hours? Do you want to get non-school hours emergencies? Do you want to get attendance calls? Do you want them to all these numbers and emails or do you want it different? Um, do you only want to get the attendance to your email? To do that, you would just uncheck these boxes and now it would come to the email only. General information, surveys, you select how you want us to reach out to you through this. My only suggestion to you is please try to remember what you did because you might be going, I'm not getting those attendance calls anymore. Well, it's because you unchecked that and so they're not coming to your phone. So keep that in mind as well. You can always come back and check on them again if you want to have them come to you. Any updates you make, just make sure that you click on save. Okay, you have control over the notifications and how we reach out to you. Health information is just a very basic information. It gives you the shot record information. So if you need to look and see, did my child get all their shots? Are they in compliance here? It will tell you that. This will give you that information. It does not take the place of your official shot record, but it is what you have turned into us and what is entered into the system. You can also then see your login history if you have any questions about the login information. So this is um, that general information. The home page we've talked a little bit about um, already, but I do want to show you as we talk about communicating with teachers. Again, we've I've shown you where you can find email addresses to go in there, but these things in the middle of the screen, we call those our wall messages. And teachers are using a message center and sending messages out through family access. So in this particular case, this teacher, Mr. Hoffer, has sent out about a um, DECA event that they're having at Mew Holtz High School. What I want you to notice here is this particular message does have a reply feature. So if there is a reply feature, you can reply to that teacher via that reply right from this wall message. Teachers have the option whether to turn on that reply or not. If it's not turned on, then use that email and email back if you have questions about these wall messages. Um, the reason that that is an option for them is teachers to go back in to see those replies do have to log in separately than their email. Many teachers are on their email all day throughout the day. So that's where many prefer their email address. But you can reply here if the reply is an option. So if I needed to reply here and this one they're asking for donations, I want to send something in, I would click on reply, I could type in, I will send in hot dogs. Okay, and then I would post my message and that would go to the teacher. So if I click on post, you can see that you have sent your reply, that teacher will be able to see that you have replied. For other messages that might not have a reply, again, you can use that email address. I click on the teacher's name. There's that email address again. 
I can copy and paste that right into my email and email I am replying to your family access message about whatever that would be. The other thing that is nice in these wall messages is one, they're giving you a lot of information, but sometimes they will put a website here for you. Check out the details here. Click on that. It will take you directly to the site that they have um, been advertising or telling you about there. Okay. The other thing that I suggest you do through this is you have access to um, change the, the status of these message. And you can, once you've replied, you can hide the message. I'm done with that message. It's now hidden. So you can keep this up to date. If you'll notice, this was um, done on February 15th. There are lots of messages all the way back. You can keep them on your wall as long as you want to. But if you want to clean that up and you want to get rid of some of those messages, you can go in and mark them as red. You can hide those messages. Again, this is our test site. So some of these things are um, definitely different there. Some schools are using this. They're sending, like here, they sent out the exam schedule. So you can see all kinds of different information. I encourage you, if something is posted in this wall area, look at that. You do want to use that. Um, so that is, I'm gonna look through my notes. I wanna make sure I have addressed most of what we talked about. Um, and all of the things that were our main features for this evening. And any of my team, if I have missed anything, please feel free to let me know that. I'm going to come back into our presentation. Um, and again, this will be posted for you. So it's gonna give you those little bits of hints and, tr hints and tricks um, as well. The overall grades are posted and in progress, the current quarter's in yellow, just as a reminder again. If it is in blue, you can click on it for more information. You can also see those assignment specifics. This will also remind you of how to communicate with your teachers. Remember, if you click anywhere that you see the teacher's name, you should be able to see that email address. So closing out my presentation portion of the evening, I really want to encourage all of you, please get your account set up and active. We want you using this feature. It is there for you. It is family access. That's what it is for, is for you to access your child's information. So we do, again, encourage you. We want you to get that account set up. Again, you can do that by visiting your child's school and just saying, I want family access set up. You can also email that family access request email address. It's family access request at gm.sbac.edu. We'll post that on the website for you. You can always email there um, and we will work with you to get you set up. My team who have been answering those questions and answers that have come in um, are the ones that reply to that email. Once you get that set up, log in frequently. It is only as good as you looking at it and the information that you are, are is being loaded into that. Remember the grade book updates in live time. When teachers enter assignments, they are in live time. When teachers enter attendance, they are in live time. So log in frequently, look at that information, communicate with your teachers via email or via those wall messages in the middle um, if they have that reply option. Your teachers want to hear from you. I know sometimes it feels like maybe they don't. I promise you. Your teachers do want to hear from you. They want your involvement as well. And then click around, explore all of the tabs and links. Everything you have is a view access other than those various areas that I showed you. You can make updates, but you make an update, you make a mistake, you go back in and you re-update. But this would help the schools contact you more too if you are updating those email addresses, updating those phone numbers. But click around and explore. We want you in there. We want you seeing everything. You your children have access very similar to your family access. Our students do have what we call student access. They have a username and password that they log in with. They can see the grade book and the assignments just like you can see those grade book and assignments. So encourage Look at that together with your children, especially as you have your older children who might be doing a little bit more of that on their own, but don't give up on doing it with them. Even if you've got a senior in high school, especially if you have a senior in high school, you wanna be looking at that. Look at that grad rec screen. Look at all of that information. It's a wealth of information for you that we want you to use and we hope that is available to you to answer a lot of your questions. Again, for information, 
there is that website. I showed you how to get there through multiple steps, but if you can just remember the school board website slash family access, it also takes you directly to that website that we were sharing. If you want information about any of those things that we've talked about tonight, how to get to your progress reports and report cards, there is a handy dandy document right here on our website that will walk you through. Where was that tab? Oh, it's that report cards tab. I click on it. I need to go in and view. I can also see my grade book. So that's one thing that you can see from here, how to communicate with teachers. This is a little bit about those wall messages and those emails and how you can access those. So this is just a reminder handout for the things that we talked about tonight. And finally, those academic records. How do I access that grade book? How do I, this one also will take you to the progress reports and handbook or and report cards directions. How do I get in there? How do I look at test scores? What do these things show me? How do I look at grad requirements? So there are definitely some of those helpful documents that are available to you on this website. On the same website is how you can log in. And again, we will continue to add to this throughout the, the rest of this year and even moving forward throughout time, making sure that you have information. So my team, Dr. Edwards, I am going to stop my sharing. Now I think we are good to um, see if anyone on our team has more information, anything I forgot to share. Um, do keep in mind that we are recording this. It will be posted on the Parent Academy website and the Family Access website. Dr. Edwards, anything you would like to add? First, I just wanted to say thank you. It's a wealth of information. I know for the parents who are watching today, it can seem overwhelming. It's a lot of information that we went through or that Kim did and that her team has prepared for you today. But just think about the opportunity to go back and review and going to the website. You can look at this again and again. If you get stuck, just ask for help. Whether that's on the website or calling your school, that's what we want. We want for you to be engaged um, with the school about how your child is doing in school. And so um, we hope that there are several things that um, were beneficial to you. And you know, you may have said, oh, I needed to know that about grades, or I didn't know I can find that easily to get the email address, or the GPA is right there, or the attendance piece. There's just so many opportunities for you to check on your child while maybe you're checking from work or from home or like she said from your phone and so we definitely encourage you to do that we also want for you to know um, through the parent academy and someone asked where that is and it's more or less just an initiative that we have through the school district to try and provide opportunities like this to help again empower parents and to help us engage with parents because we wanna be transparent in the school district and we wanna work with parents and we all want for all of our students to be successful. And so there's different ways that we're trying to do that, um, which brings me to my final point, which is that next week we're moving um, to have another one of these sessions, um, but it will be for, um, or surrounded around the topic of financial aid and the FAFSA. So if you are a secondary parent, you have a high school student, or maybe, you know, moving in that direction, they may not be a senior right now, but you want to learn more about it, um, then please tune in. We'll be sending some information home the same way you found out about this. Please share that. Share with, you know, your friends. And I don't know, maybe you're in a special league or a baseball team and you know parents say, you know what, you guys missed out. Spread the word because we want to continue to have these opportunities to to help each other. And if there is something um, significant that you really, truly want to learn about um, and you want us to put something together, then please email us. Um, you can email me at edwardad at gm.sbac.edu. I hope you know that everyone is gm.sbac.edu. So I'm Edward A.D. Um, or you can call um, actually uh, Fernside, which is 955. 6875 and ask for the Parent Academy and there will be someone who can assist you. So again, thank you for tuning in today and please spread the word about us having these um, types of virtual sessions to encourage you and your students. That's it for me. Thanks, Kim. Thank you so much. You all have a wonderful evening. We appreciate you joining. Good night.